Kabir. Being a burn victim is unlike anything I would have ever imagined. When the fire stripped the flesh of my body, surviving the trauma was only the first step. It's not like a brown bone or a sprained ankle. Those things can heal. Yes, I was healing. But I knew I would never be the same again. Kabir, Nisha said, coming into the room Jana planted firmly on her hip. Would you like to go out for a walk today? The weather is so beautiful. And I thought it would be nice to go to the park and have a picnic lunch. It's warm but not too hot and it's overcast so the direct sun won't hurt your scars. I wanted to say yes to keep the sparkle in her eyes but today was a bad day. Pain-wise, plus my heart was heavy for Vivan and Meera. Hearing that Meera had lost her publishing contract was just one more weight that tugged at my heart. I could barely muster the energy to walk into the kitchen, never mind walking to the park. I shook my head sadly. I don't think so. Not today, I responded. As I anticipated, the smile left her eyes. Disappointment set in once more. It seemed like all I could do lately was to disappoint the woman I loved. Ironically, now that I was forced to lay around and heal, I realized that I had missed out on so much because I was busy either building Cafe Kabir or making it better. The woman I shared my life with, the one I pledged to take care of, had spent many lonely days and evenings here. Without me, she ran the house alone when I should have been at her side more. Now that I was here, I could barely scrape up the energy to smile around the pain. I frowned at the scar on my hand. Wounds can be covered with a scar, but some open up the moment they are touched with the wrong words. I think Nisha knew that, judging by the way she spoke so carefully these days. She now sat down beside me, repositioning her baby on her lap. Are you okay? She asked, concerned wrinkling her bra. Is the pain bad today? I nodded. Yes. And Nisha, I just feel so bad for Vivan and Meera. They had their dreams and those bright girls were going to bring them success. I just know they would. It's so unfair. Plus, I feel even worse because they had such hopes of helping us. I think it po- put even more pressure on them, so their failures must seem even greater to them. Nisha smiled sadly. I've thought of that too. I want to tell them that they haven't let us down. Not at all. But how do you go about saying something like that? My shoulders lifted in a shrug as much as they could with the tide scaring around that area. Sensing our despondency or maybe because she was a rambunctious two-year-old, Gianna began to squirm in Nisha's lap. I know, baby. Nisha sued. Why don't you take her to the park for a couple hours? I suggested. Oh, Nisha demurred. I don't know if that's a good idea. I don't want to leave you alone. We'll just stay here. As if she understand our conversation, Gianna started to screw up her face and teared. Threatened. I'll be fine, I insisted. It's only for a few hours and I think I'll just take a nap anyway. It feels like that is what my body wants right now. She looked hesitant, torn. I could tell she wanted to go, but wanted to stay with me at the same time. I smiled. Encouragingly. Are you sure? She said hesitantly, chewing her lip. Maybe just an hour? Enjoy yourself, I said. I'll see you after my nap. To emphasize my decision, I shifted positions and led my head on the arm of the couch. She stood up quickly and I pulled my legs up and stretched out where she had been sitting. I heard her humming quietly as she gathered the diaper bag in the stroller. It was nice to hear that happy sound from her. Call me if you need me, she insisted, closing the door behind her quietly. After she left, I got up and shuffled over to the window, standing far enough from the window so she couldn't see me if she looked over, but close enough so I could watch my small family walking down the street. Her steps seemed lighter and I knew she was probably relieved to be out of the house for a little while. She turned around the corner and I returned to the couch, sitting down heavily. The burns on my arms hurt, but seeing her happily walking down the street made my heart ache even more. Sweet Nisha, she had always been there for me, waiting patiently for each next phase of her life. When we met, her spirit had been shattered and I had tried to coax a smile out of her with a cool coffee and ice cream. I was only working at a cafe at the time, but even with only a handful of words between us, I started to dream about this beautiful woman in the coral dress. But I mused on the couch. Nisha was still waiting. I was busy with the cafe and my long hours were driven by my desperate need to ensure my family's comfort. I didn't want Nisha and her baby wanting for anything. 
and until cafe kabhi went up in flames they didn't want for anything except for my time and attention i was crushed as i came to the realization that they had been hungry for me husband father i was standing by the door as it clicked open and nisha tipped tiptoed in with a sleeping sweetie baby on her shoulder what are you doing she whispered why don't you put her down i suggested also in low tone i want to talk to you <laughs>